All right, guys, we're going to begin class, and we are going to turn in our textbooks to page 66 and page 67, where it says Hinduism and Buddhism developed. And we're going to pray first, but as you can see, we're going to follow a chart that I'm going to um, fill out as we talk and, and look through our chapter today. And um, make sure that you have this in your notes. Okay, um, the, the chapter, the section is titled Hinduism and Buddhism Develop. And when you talk to people, uh, you will always hear them say that Hinduism and Buddhism is older than Christianity. And there's a problem with that. The reason why people make that statement is because they think that by saying that Buddhism and Hinduism is older than Christianity, they discredit Christianity. Because in their minds, what's older is better, right? But what's wrong with that statement is that Christianity, most people think that it began when Jesus was on earth, and even later on so, when the church in Acts, in the book of Acts, developed. And that's how they view that that was the beginning of Christianity, as we know it. But as we look at the scriptures, okay, Christianity, or better said, because that was a term given by man, did you know that? As an insult. Christians were called Christians as an insult. You are Christ followers. And then the Christians, the followers of Christ, took that name with, with pride. Okay? But originally, the word Christian was an insult. Um, to the followers of the way, which they were called. They were called the follower of the way because Jesus said what? I am the way, the truth and the life, right? But, but uh, God's plan of salvation because of his love for us began, guess where? At creation. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned, and sin entered the world, God was already loving them. And he clothed them so they wouldn't be ashamed of their nakedness. And there's, and it's more profound than the fact that they were physically without clothes and were ashamed. It, 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 it's more profound than that. They were ashamed because they knew what, that their relationship with God, with the Creator who loves them, had been broken. Okay? And since then, God, since the beginning, promises them, I'm going to send a Savior. So technically, when does Christianity start? After Jesus was born? No. At the beginning. At the, where? The beginning. the beginning. Okay. Now, it, it, it's not called Christianity till later on. Yes, that's historically accurate. But uh, when it comes to, to the uh, plan of God... You know, some of these terms um, are really, you know, um, created by man. They're, they're man-made terms, okay? Uh, did, did you ever know that? Did you ever, did you ever realize that the word Christian was created by people that opposed uh, followers of Christ? So I like the terminology Christ follower. I'm a Christ follower, okay? And, and, and immediately, um, you know... Uh, another thing that comes to to the argu to the discussion, uh, I don't like calling it argument, is the fact that um, it, it is uh, is Judaism. Okay, you need to realize that in in God's plan for the world, Judaism or the Hebrew nation was seen as a race, a people, not a religion. Okay? It wasn't seen as a, as a religion till after Christ. When the religious leaders of that time refused to acknowledge that Jesus was the promised Savior. So, to the Hebrew race and to the world. But it was first given to Abraham. And remember, that's another thing. Remember where Abraham comes from? We studied this earlier. From Ur, which was in Summer or Sumer. Remember the Sumerians? Though that was one of the first civilizations. So God chose to reveal himself and his plan of salvation to the whole world, first through the 
Jewish uh, nation. So Judaism did not really develop into a religion till later. It was always seen as a race, a group of people that had a special, um, that had been chosen by God to reveal his plan of salvation uh, to the whole world. Okay? So, um, anyways, but today we're going to talk about Hinduism and Buddhism, and I wanted to take this opportunity to compare it with Christianity so that you see the difference. But let me pray first so that God can open our minds and hearts to understand this. God, thank you for this day. We love you, and we thank you, God, that you love us, and that it's all about you pursuing us to have our relationship with us. And God, that is the history of mankind, is the history of you pursuing us. And Lord, as we study these world religions, remind us, God, that any form of, of belief that is not Jesus, Lord, is not bringing us closer to you, God, but it's actually bringing us farther from you, Lord. Um, help us see Jesus as the only way to heaven. And because that's what he said he was, Lord. And uh, if we truly accept him and receive him as our Lord and Savior, uh, we must also agree that what he said was true. So, Father, open our minds and our hearts and give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so let's begin as on page 66, Hinduism and Buddhism develop. So first came Hinduism, and we're talking about the Indo-European societies, and Hinduism and Buddhism kind of uh, came from similar civilizations, and they just uh, uh, split up from uh, the other. And the first distinctions that we want to make is that when it comes to Christianity, Reality, or the source of reality, or the creator, the source of existence, is a personal creator. I mean, he's so personal that he calls himself as father. Yes, what do you need? Sure. All right, so God is so personal that he reveals himself as father, okay? As a matter of fact, there's a word in the Bible called Abba, which, which in English, the closest we can get to that word is daddy, okay? Daddy. Um, so we have a personal creator, and this personal creator, and catch this, this is very important, guys. Personal creator reveals himself. He revealed himself. He doesn't play hide and go seek. He loves us so much that he wants us to know him. He doesn't hide himself from us. You know, as we talk about Hinduism and Buddhism, especially Buddhism that ha deals with arriving at a level of existence, all right, or connecting with the essence of Buddha, arriving at el enlightenment, okay, is something that we have to search out and look for and and and, and in ourselves, right. But God loves us so much that he shows himself to us. Okay? So when it comes to Buddhism, actually, Buddhism uh, believes in no God. It, it's closer to athe atheism, believe it or not. So there's no God, according to Buddhism. Or there's what they call the essence of Buddha or Buddha essence. Okay? And um, as we read in our chapter, we're going to see that Buddha, or the man we call Buddha, his name was Siddhartha Gautama. And Buddha simply means the enlightened one. So he was, according to Buddhism, the first man to achieve enlightenment. Okay? Enlightenment. And Hinduism believes in a impersonal essence that we have to become one with, an impersonal essence, okay? Or many gods. There's, there's so many um, forms of Hinduism, okay? 
And there's many, 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 many deities in Hinduism. There's a picture of one of them on page 67. Okay. Um, the name was Vishnu. Vishnu developed into uh, one of the main gods of, of Hinduism. Okay. Now, so that, that's when it comes to God. How about humanity? When it comes to Christianity, we were created by God in his image. Created by this God, the one and only God. In his image. So, so there's a sense of human value as well, right? H have you ever heard somebody say, to err is human? Or, of course I sin, I am human. Have you heard that before? I'm just human. Well, if you think about it, to err is part of our fallen human nature. But our original nature, when God created us, humanity in its pure self, right after creation, was sinless. Remember? So to sin actually is part of our fallen human nature. Okay? But not, uh, it, it, that's not how um, God's original creation of humanity was. Okay? We were created by God in His image. According to Hinduism, we are divine in our own essence. We are divine. We are little g gods, or we are deified uh, beings, or have the ability. It's better. It's a better way to say it. We have the ability to uh, reach this level. Okay, to reach this level. It was Hinduism that came with the concept of, that created the concept of karma and reincarnation that we defined yesterday, right? Reincarnation, the idea that if you, uh, if you are good or if you are able to reach this divine essence, this divine existence, you will come back uh, reincarnated, Okay. If you are not that great, you may come back as an animal or a cockroach. All right? Now, and karma basically refers to our good deeds. The fact that if we're good, it will follow us in our next life. If we're bad, we'll pay for it in our next life. Okay, whether we come back as a cow or as another or, or, or as, a, as a, a human again. Okay, Buddhism believes in no personal essence whatsoever. It all has to do with the mind arriving, reaching enlightenment. That's their heaven. It has to do with a mental, a mental state. Okay. Any questions so far? Does it make sense? Yes. So, so if you don't, if you can't follow me, if you can't keep up with me, because there's there's a train of thought that I want you to understand here. So you see, there's a big difference. And I, I showed you the chart yesterday. When you compare world religions and Christianity, it's all about. Even though Christianity is considered a world religion. But to make Christianity distinct in one statement is that world religions are about us reaching a, a higher level, whether it's God or whatever it is, or nirvana, by our works, right? And Christianity, especially during the season, is about what? God coming to us. To us. Very good, Emily. God coming to us. He reaches out to us. We don't have to perform or reach a level of existence to be approved by God. He gives us approval. He approves of you. He loves you because of Jesus. Okay? Who took your place. Who was your substitute. Alright? 
Now, all three acknowledge that there's a problem with humanity, okay? And whatever you want to call it, I call it sin, okay? Hinduism says that our problem is that we're trapped in reincarnation and in a world of illusion due to ignorance or karma. So we have to gain knowledge through their writings, and they have tons of writings. They don't have like one holy book, okay? But it's all about arriving at this level of knowledge and, and reaching such level of goodness that, that because of that good karma following us, we are freed from this reincarnation cycle, okay? Which kind of, you know what that reminds me of a little bit? The Roman Catholic teaching of purgatory, right? Which is, by, by the way, not scriptural. It's, 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 uh, it's been adapted from, legend, from, from uh, writings outside of scripture. The idea of purgatory is that when you die, if you weren't a good person, you can go to purgatory and make things right. You know, you get kind of like a second chance and then you go to heaven. But the Bible never says that. A perfect example is Jesus on the cross. He looks at the thief that believes in him, remember? And the, thie and, and, and the thief that says, Jesus, remember me in paradise. And Jesus tells him what? Today, you will be with me in paradise. So it's based on what? Faith. Faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. That immediately your sins are forgiven, are wiped away. The thief on the cross, he had no life to live. That was the end of his life. So that's the perfect example that your salvation and my salvation do not depend on what we do. Right? Now, obviously, when we come to Christ and our sins are forgiven and we're still alive, our lives change because the Holy Spirit comes and lives in and through us. But anyway, so the problem, according to Hinduism, is that we're trapped in reincarnation. It's like a cycle that we're trapped in, trapped in reincarnation, and we have to be set free. From this illu illusionary world, trapped in reincarnation in an illusionary world. Okay? And the reason why we have this problem is what's is ignorance. Or karma. So to get to be freed from this cycle of reincarnation, we have to what? Gain knowledge through their writings. And remember the name of their writings? I think it's called the uh, Kasta Muharava, etc. Right. Correct. You remember. Okay. One of the great epics are known as a Mahabharata, that's one of them, okay, or the, or the part of that epic story or writings known as the Bhagavad Gita, okay, but anyways, and they have other writings as well, okay. So karma and reincarnation are the two main aspects of, of Hinduism and what Hinduism is based on. All right. Buddhism, and this is the connection with Hinduism, okay, is kind of similar in that it believes that we're trapped in, re in reincarnation, but let me write this, trapped in reincarnation, but... The reason, what shows this trap that we're in is the fact that we are in a suffering world. So through enlightenment, 
through a mental state of enlightenment, we can escape the suffering. Okay? And the reason why we're in this suffering is due to desire. We have to free ourselves of desire and also karma. So you see how it's related to Hinduism a little bit, right? Except they get rid of any form of deity. All right? They believe in a state of mind known as nirvana. Has nothing to do with the, the rock group from the night. How many of you guys still have heard of nirvana? None of you guys, right? <laughs> wow. That means I'm old. <laughs> All right, so nirvana was a rock group from the 90s. And nirvana is the state of being that Bud Buddhists say they arrive, and that's their heaven. Okay? All right, so... Um, that's the problem according to Buddhism and Hinduism. According to Christianity, okay, according to Christianity, what's our problem? Sin. Sin. And because of sin, what makes sin a problem? That we are under God's judgment who is holy. Yes, is loving, but he's also a holy God. And remember, um, he is just. Okay? He's a God of justice. We are under God's judgment. Why? Because of sin and rebellion against our Creator. He loved us. We ran away from Him. Yet He seeks us out. You know, my daughter is very active. So when we go shopping at stores, sometimes I freak out like, where did she go? <laughs> she like thinks it's funny hiding in between the racks of the clothing. I'm like, that's not funny. <laughs> Inside of me, I'm like panicking. And I, you know, but she's always active. Papi, find me. Okay. And what do I do? Do I say, oh, whatever, she's somewhere. No, I look for her. I want to find her. That's what a loving father does. And that's what God does with us, right? He finds us. He looks out for us until he finds us. So, since we have a problem, we need salvation, right? So, when we have a problem, we need salvation. We need to be saved from this problem. We need to be saved from sin, all right? Hinduism believes that we are delivered if, if the problem, according to Hinduism, is caused by ignorance, how are we delivered? What's the opposite of ignorance? Um, wisdom. Not, not wisdom. Knowledge. Good. Knowledge, right? So, according to Hinduism, we're delivered from our problem, delivered through knowledge. Through knowledge and works of devotion. Okay? And there's very devoted people in all these world religions. I might say sometimes even more devoted than some believers. But we're not saved by devotion. But as believers, we should be devoted to God. All right? That should be our desire. Flowing out of God's love for us. So we want to love Him back. Okay? So we're delivered through knowledge and works of devotion. Okay? And notice, guys, how I say... Christianity, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Hinduism and Buddhism. These are ideas. Okay? And I get caught up in this because of our society, and so do you. And sometimes we refer to people as what? Hindus or Buddhists, right? Mm -hmm. 
even Christians were labeled as an insult, right? By, the, by, by Romans that were persecuting them. But all the, the ideas, the belief system of Hinduism and Buddhism is what the enemy has blinded people. They're people. They're not identified as Hindus or as Buddhists in the eyes of God. They're identified in the eyes of God as people, his creatures that he loves. Okay? His creatures that he loves. Hey, Mr. Garcia. Uh, excuse me. I'll get something. Thank you. Okay. So, so you understand what I'm getting at here, right? So different people around the world have different beliefs or ideas or ways that they view the world, but that's because, not because um, that's what identifies them or gives them their identity, but because that's what either they grew up with, Okay. Or the Bible says they have been blinded. If we believe in Jesus, it's not because we're any better than them. It's because of God's goodness and grace and love in opening our blind eyes. So now as Christians, we look at those who believe in these systems of Hinduism and, and Buddhism and other world religions that we'll get at in the future. We view them as people just like us that God can also set free, all right? So, so be careful of referring to people as, oh, he's a Hindu, no? He's a human <laughs> who believes in Hinduism, right? Correct? You understand what I'm saying? So we, can, we cannot um, forget about the humanity of every single person in existence because, guess what? It is their humanity that reminds us that God is searching and is looking out and will come find those who diligently seek him. And God will have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And it doesn't matter what they believe at that moment. God can change us and open our minds in the twinkling of an eye. Okay? So here we go with salvation with Buddhism. Buddhism says that we are saved. Our salvation arrives from within ourselves. So we can um, summarize it by putting W self, within self. Within self. We look within ourselves. The problem is that there's nothing good in ourselves. There's sin. Right? In our, in our current condition. When God created us, He created us good. But when sin entered, if we look at ourselves, we're going to be kind of discouraged because we'll see what, when we find what's in, in us. But according to Buddhism, we have to search within us and arrive at a level of enlightenment within our minds, and that's salvation. Okay? And the way... Um, the way that uh, we find this salvation within ourselves is arriving at a place where we find deliverance from suffering. That's very interesting, right? Because the scripture does not necessarily, I mean, it, it doesn't call suffering good. All right, if you're suffering, that's a good thing. Yes, no, okay? That's a misunderstanding, a misconception of when the Bible says, count it all joy when you face trials. It tells you why you should be joyful. Because God uses suffering for our good. It doesn't say that suffering is good. It says that God, that suffering is used by God for our good. And when we suffer, we should think of Jesus suffering on the cross for us. The Bible says that in a way we are sharing in his sufferings. Okay? And just like 
The suffering of Jesus had a purpose, our salvation. So our suffering has purpose. Your life, guys, girls, your life has purpose. You are created by a God who is your father, who loves you. And that leads me to salvation when it comes to Christianity. Salvation is deliverance from judgment. By the forgiveness of sin by faith in Jesus. So it's about the object of our faith. Everybody has faith. But what's the object that our faith is on? All of us here practice faith every day in someone or something. You guys practice faith by sitting on the chair you're sitting. You guys didn't doubt it and say, okay, is this chair put together? Should I trust it? I don't know. Should I sit or not sit? Right? You just sat. You practiced faith. You trusted that it was going to hold you. Right? But salvation comes when your faith is on Jesus. When your reliance is on Jesus. Right? Okay. How about the afterlife? How about the afterlife? We already talked about nirvana in Buddhism, which came from India. So, you know, usually um, we think of Buddhism as a Chinese thing, right? But Buddhism came from India. Kind of like an atheistic branch of Hinduism. How about the afterlife? When it comes to Hinduism, um, they say that the afterlife is merging when we finally merge with, remember what they said? With the impersonal essence. Kind of like, not exactly, but similar to the Force in Star Wars, right? Okay? So, it, the afterlife, uh, we experience the afterlife when we merge... The afterlife, according to Hindu Hinduism, is merging, merging with ultimate reality. Merging, yes, you can't see because my stand is on the way, right? Let me remove it for you. Sorry about that. Can you see now? Okay, there you go. So, um, the afterlife, when it comes to Hinduism, is through mer merging with the, uh, with the ultimate reality, which they refer to this kind of like force or divine existence, okay? Or, existing in a heavenly bliss with the deities that they believe in, okay? With, with all their little g-gods. So it's existing, existing in the same, re, arriving at the same realm as the gods that they believe in, or you yourself being connected to the essence. That they ref, that's, the, the, that's their god, I guess, that they worship. All right? Buddhism is nirvana that you their 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 view of afterlife is is enlightenment is reaching a, a level of of mindfulness okay that comes by the extinction of suffering have, have you seen where buddhist monks live where do they live we can see the boat Okay, not, 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 one second. So where do monks usually live? Uh, Move to that temple. chair. Huh? Okay, and where are these temples? Are they in the middle of the city? 
Usually they're in the hills, right? Because they want to be separated, disconnected from suffering in all levels. And if you reach and are able to empty your mind from feeling suffering, from experiencing suffering, then you reach heaven. Okay? You get rid of suffering, desire, and this is kind of scary, desire and individuality. See, in Christianity, you're always an individual. You're always unique, created by God. When we go to heaven, you're still you. In Buddhism, you have to lose yourself. Complete, just lose yourself. You know what Jesus does? He redeems who we are. Who we are as people, who we are as who God created us to be, has been damaged by sin. But when we come to Jesus, He makes us who we were meant to be. All right? We don't lose our individuality. Okay? So, we, according to Buddhism, we arrive... To the state of nirvana when we get rid of what? Suffering, desire, and individuality. See, de desires are not necessarily bad, right? You can have good desires, okay? In Buddhism, all desire is, is not good. You need to eliminate yourself from all desire. Okay? And that's what they call nirvana. When it comes to Christianity, the afterlife is we have eternal communion, eternal communion and fellowship with God in heaven or judgment in hell. And obviously the first, um, the first comment made to that idea of hell is this, God is so mean, right? My favorite verse to address that is uh, John 3.18, where it says that Jesus did not come to condemn us, all right? And those who believe are no longer condemned. And those who do not believe are already condemned. In other words, before they failed to believe in Jesus, they were already condemned. Our sin condemns us. It's our sin. It's not that God puts sin in us and labels us condemned. Our sin, okay, Demands, calls for the justice of God. But God in His grace and love says, Yes, I will be just and punish sin, but I will do it in the person of Jesus Christ. And all you have to do is receive it. Receive it. And justice has been made. Your sins are forgiven, sin is punished, and you are delivered. But most importantly, because that's not what salvation is about. Did you know that? Salvation is the fact that now we can finally know God as Father. And Jesus said that in John 17. Did you know that? Jesus said, and this is eternal life. He doesn't go in John 17, I think it's verses 1 through 3. He doesn't say... This is eternal life, that you don't go to hell, but go to heaven instead. But that's our idea, right? If you grew up hearing about, you know, the Bible and Christianity, or your parents took you to church or whatever, you have this idea that, oh, salvation, is, eternal life is about me going to heaven, not hell. Jesus said this, eternal life, and this is eternal life. 
Jesus didn't, couldn't get more clearer than that. And this is eternal life, that they may know God through me. So salvation, eternal life, is about knowing God. Sin keeps us from knowing God. But when our sins are forgiven, we can know God and get to know Him each day more and more. And He reveals Himself to us more and more and shows us how He loves us as Father and how He, you know, He cares for you. He's for you, not against you. He came. So this Christmas season, remember that. He came for you. Okay? Let's pray, guys. Eyes closed, heads bowed. Heavenly Father, yes, all this history is good. This is the history of mankind and how our attempts to fill the void that sin has left in our hearts have created all these belief systems. Alex, you guys sit down. But Lord, remind us that if it's not through Jesus, these belief systems, these ideas, these even very devoted rituals, God, lead, leads us farther from you and not closer to you. It's a false sense of spirituality and connection with God. Because connection with God, knowing you as Father, and being known as sons and daughters of the living God, comes by faith in the name of Jesus. At whose name every knee will bow, and every tongue will say that he is Lord. And we pray and ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, you were awesome. You took good notes, right? Yes. Okay. Was that not a more fun way of going through the chapter? Yes. Okay. All right, guys. Have a good day. See you we'll later. We'll see you later.